All right, welcome back. Uh, so before we get into the details, like the nitty gritty, um, I wanted to take one more like high level look at what we're doing here with endpoints and kind of compare and contrast that uh, to what we've done before. Uh, so we're doing endpoints, um, and so it's something that you can use with your your apps. That's actually the big thing, right? So now you can make like an iOS or Android app, and they can talk to your back end. Everything else we've done in this class, it can't do that, right? So I mean, it's purely web, um, and now we're breaking into these other markets as well, which is really cool. Um, and what we're going to focus on uh, first is is not any of the clients, right? We don't care about any of the clients. In fact, we're going to only ever make a web client, right? Um, we're going to do our testing with the API Explorer. So that was the tool I showed you at the end of the last video. Once we kind of get our API perfect with the API Explorer, then we'll go implement a client. Um, and that division of labor uh, can be really nice. Uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video, though, is just kind of the high-level summary of what we've been doing in this course, uh, and then how endpoints is kind of, you know, radically different, but still kind of the same. Um, and so what we've done before uh, is the approach that I would call the forms plus Jinja approach. So with the form plus Jinja approach, um, the HTML was very powerful, right? So you would actually make in your HTML a form. Uh, that form had input fields. Those input fields had name attributes on them. When you hit submit, that form would make the post uh, to the back end. From your back end, you would pull the information out of the form post. Um, it used as form encoding. You would use that. Uh, you would put stuff into the data store. Whenever we wanted to read things, we would always do like queries or, or ID gets if we had the key. Um, that would go into like a page handler. Um, and then that page handler would use Jinja to put information into the page. And that's the approach we've been using this whole time. The thing I like about that approach is that it's nice and simple. Um, it's easy to get up and running with projects. It's also nice because like, you're never gonna learn like the framework you're gonna use for the rest of your career. So I think it's important to kind of learn a couple different frameworks and kind of build up your skill set. Um, and the faster you learn the framework before, the, you know, the faster you can learn the next one, right? So uh, forms plus Jinja is not considered the newest, biggest, best. Uh, things that are newest, biggest, best use, um, you know, Asynchronous loading, uh, Ajax calls, uh, Firebase actually does a lot of cool stuff as well, uh, but we're not we're not quite ready for the Firebase level. Uh, maybe come back for another class. Um, endpoints is what I'm supposed to be talking about. Endpoints, uh, JavaScript is king, right? So your web client uh, and his JavaScript, it like runs the whole show. Um, so whenever the uh, JavaScript wants to get information, um, it makes an Ajax request to your endpoints API. Your endpoints API still has handlers. It still talks to the same data store. Uh, so that's why the two can, can talk together just fine. Um, it does queries and IDs to get information. Um, and then it sends back a JSON response. So everything uh, goes through JavaScript. And then your JavaScript interacts with the HTML. Uh, it loads information on the page. Um, here we're going to be using like jQuery commands like .html would load it onto the page. Um, and the HTML will, of course, talk to uh, JavaScript through whatever listeners you've got. Maybe it's a click listener or something else. Um, but you can see that the fundamental flow of data is, is just entirely different. Um, it's a static page, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and the JavaScript that's in there, it runs the whole show. Uh, so that's kind of what it's all about. If you look at kind of the breakdowns of the files, so before we always kind of had an app.yaml and then a main.py. That main.py told you what handlers there were. Uh, those handlers had templates that they would load, um, and the whole thing just kind of changes now, right? So we've still got an app.yaml. Um, instead of a main.py, we'll, we'll create a file called an api.py. He'll still talk to models, and when necessary, he'll talk to utils files. Um, this app is simple enough that we don't really need any utils, so he'll just talk to models. Um, and then the only HTML you're loading will be in your static folder. Uh, so it's kind of like a static file server, which is kind of cool. Uh, we'll get into the details, but uh, your models.py is going to have a new superclass uh, that's going to allow you to do some new things. Um, and then your API is going to be a type of service so that it can do these JSON uh, communication. So what we're going to do in this unit, uh, just to kind of like keep things more organized, is we're actually going to work in a uh, doc. Uh, so we're going to work in this doc instead. And this doc is going to make it easier for us to copy chunks of code. You can see this doc is like still counting. Oh no, it's like 40 pages. Um, but 
instead of making you type a lot this unit, uh, we've done a lot of things. There's going to be a lot of just copy pasting. Um, and so it's just easier for me to set that up in a doc format. So we're going to work through this doc. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is going to be set up. Uh, but you know what? I'm actually going to do set up in the next video just because it makes for a nice clean uh, division. All right. So now you've kind of got the overview uh, of what we're doing and why endpoints is different. Um, but I really don't learn anything until I start doing it. So come back next time and we'll start doing some of this stuff. All right. See you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.